Hey, do you have a machine that you want to wipe out and run Windows 11 on? Just you want to wipe it clean and start from scratch? You don't want to play with any Windows utilities? You just want to gun it? Uh, or do you have a new hard drive you put in or a hard drive you've upgraded in, a, in an older machine that you want to now install Windows 11 on? Well, we're going to show you how to do that right from scratch. First thing you need to do is go to, well, just Google Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. And we could give you a link, but it's so much faster for you just to Google it. The first link if you Google is download Windows 11. Strangely, not the first one if you use Bing, but we'll leave that alone. And there's three different ways it says to get Windows 11 uh, here, but the easiest one and the one we want is the Windows 11 installation media. So click download now, open that file. Now, while we're waiting here, and this does take a minute, what we have to do is find a USB stick that's at least eight gigabyte in size. Okay, let's click accept. And now it wants to know what language and what edition. So if this isn't uh, correct, you can click this checkbox and then you can select different options. In my case, it's correct. So I'm just going to click next. Now, where do I want it to go? Do I want it to go to an ISO, uh, which is just an image file for a DVD, or do I want it to the USB stick? Guess what, boys and girls, USB stick, next and next, uh, because that's a stick I have plugged in. And this is going to be downloaded in just a few minutes. It will then copy it onto the USB stick and make it bootable. And we'll be right back. Take that USB stick and put it into your computer with the new hard drive or the computer that you want to just completely wipe out without bothering with utilities. You just want to pancake it right from, the, send it right back to factory. Make sure the machine's off, then power it up and you have to press whatever key is relevant for your PC to make it uh, choose a boot options. Now, in my case, I've got a Dell, so you press F12 for the boot selection. If you don't know what you're doing with this, uh, often it's F2, delete, and sometimes on older machines, even escape. But often F2 or delete uh, just press them over and over again to get into the BIOS. We can change the boot order. Again, in our case, because we've got a Dell, we can just press F12 over and over again, and it will bring up the list of boot options for us. So let's do that. Power up. Okay, and just press the F12 key a bunch of times until the screen comes up. In my case, it's going to be that screen. Top right-hand corner, in my case, it's going to say preparing one-time boot. There it is. And then I'm going to select the USB stick to boot off of. And I'm going to leave this as English, English US because that's close enough to where I am. I'm going to click install now. And there's the ULA or end user license agreement. I'm sure you and your lawyer read that carefully. So let's click next. I want to install Windows. And in this case, uh, I have a, I had something already on this drive. So what I'm going to do is I have to delete all of the partitions. If you had a brand new drive, There'll be nothing here, you just click next. In my case, I wanna delete everything that's on here. I wanna delete the partitions and just get rid of them. So there's nothing left, there's no, nothing there at all, completely gone. And let's click next. And this will take a minute, so I will come back when this is done. In my case, I'm in Canada. So Canada, there we go, and yes. And yeah, I will leave the default keyboard. American keyboard's fine. No, I don't want to add another keyboard layout. And now it wants to uh, connect to the internet. Now you might ask why it wants to do that right away. Well, it wants to do that because it wants to force you into having a Microsoft account. It also wants to check for updates. Now, if I didn't want a Microsoft account initially, I could simply click, I don't have internet. And it'll give me, I believe, a little pitch about why that's a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I can say, well, continue with limited setup. However, as soon as I plug this into the Ethernet in the future or get it on Wi-Fi, what will happen is it will come back and finish the setup off, which is not good. All right, so I'm going to click continue with limited setup. Generally a bad idea. Type in here, user one. I don't want a password on this one. Sure. Now, you may ask why Microsoft is asking you a million questions. And the reason is uh, European law requires each question to be separate and clear. So they can't do that Mondo screen anymore with a whole bunch of questions on that you could just say yes to the defaults. So you have to go through each one, which is a pain in the butt. 
There we go. Now you might think, well, we're done. No, there's a couple things left to do. First thing you really need to do is get this connected to the internet. So in my case, I'm going to plug the ethernet in. In your case, you might want to get it on Wi-Fi, whatever works for you. Get into device manager. So just right click on the start button and select device manager. And as you can see here, there are a bunch of devices that are not running and that's not good. We need to get that fixed. So the first thing again is bring up device manager so you know what you're up against. Second thing you need to do then is to run a Windows update. Easiest way to do that is to right click on the start button and select settings. And then just click Windows update at the top right hand corner. And by the way, in case you're wondering, well, why, why wouldn't it find those devices? Yeah, because if we had it connected to the internet already during the install, it would have. <laughs> so you can see it would have uh, downloaded. You can see here, there's a whole pile of devices right? So I'll also click this download and install cumulative update, the June update. And while we're waiting for that, uh, the, another thing that really needs to get done is to flash all of the hardware. So what you want to do is click uh, your start button, go to Edge. By the way, Edge is just Chrome, so I highly recommend it. I'm going to surf off to Dell.com. Uh, let's go to support and support home. And you can either enter the model you've got in the Dell case, or you can just let it identify it. So we're going to let it uh, download its little utility to do the identification. Better known as Support Assist. We'll install that. Yes, you can do this whilst the patches are being installed. Now we'll restart. And as you can see, it's forcing you to have a Microsoft account don't want one. So I'm going to uh, select back and I'm going to select skip for now. I do think we're done, but not quite. So right click on the start button, select device manager, or device mangler as we call it in the business. And you'll see now, hopefully all of your devices are installed. If they're not, don't panic because you can head off to your OEM company's website, in my case, Dell and download whatever is needed. So in my case, drivers and downloads, and I'm going to check for updates, and this is going to launch Support Assist in the background, which is that little piece of software that we installed previously. And you're probably wondering about the Windows 11 license. What happened with that? Well, this is a Dell and most modern machines ship with the license key in their BIOS. So in the BIOS being the firmware of the computer. And so Windows 11 machines, uh, well, Windows 11 license can come from any machine that had Windows 10 on it previously. So this machine had Windows 10 on it before, even with a brand new hard drive, it doesn't make any difference. Windows will go out uh, when it boots up and connects to the internet and it will activate automatically if the machine had Windows 11 on it already. So you can see here I've gone into system and about and now I can go into product key and I can see the activation state and you can see it's activated with the digital license. And again, that just means that the license is, well, the the key, the code is stored in the hardware of the computer. And we're pretty close to done. Two or three things left to show you. Uh, first, let's go back to device manager, make sure there's no bangs. A bang is a, a triangle with a yellow exclamation mark in it. Nope, everything looks clean, so that's good. Next thing is go do another Windows update. My guess is a lot of these things are actually just going to fail because uh, the Dell installation took care of them. Two other things to show you. Uh, the first is uh, Task Manager. You used to be able to just right click on the Start button or on the Task Bar and select Task Manager. You can no longer do that. Uh, quite an annoyance. So, um, well, while we're here, let's go into Task Bar Settings because that's something else to change. Having the Start button in the middle and having it dynamically expand is really obnoxious. It's pretty, but it's obnoxious. So if you want to turn that off, and I certainly do, change that from center to left and it will move it over to the far left. So that's gone, that's a good thing. And then to bring up a task manager, uh, there's a couple ways to do it, but the easiest way is on your keyboard, press control, alt, escape. And you can select more details, go into performance, 
right click, change graph to logical processors. And you can see this is an eighth generation i5 with a pretty impressive six cores. And these are full cores, not, uh, not hyper threads. This is running the integrated Intel 630. And this machine is going to fly. It will work really nicely. It also has SSD. Uh, now this is an M.2 SSD. All right, hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please click subscribe as well. Commenting, super helpful with the Google algorithm, so please do that. Uh, and you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.